Hi, welcome to my home. My name is Jackie, and today we're going to talk about this beautiful field tote. Um, but not only about the field tote. So we're going to talk, it's more of a chit chat video. I figured I wanted to get this point of view out of the way so people who were not interested could move along. So this channel is about my collection of bags. So it's about me. These are things I use, I love, I buy. Um, and I feel represent me in some way. So I wanted to showcase what bag I use for Sunday school. So I am a religious person. I go to the United Methodist Church. Don't worry, it's not a um, come to the church with me video. This is um, why I use the Coach Pride tote. This is the Field Tote 40 um, as my Sunday school bag. Currently, uh, this is the largest bag um, in the Field Tote collection, which is the Field Tote 40 size. And the reason I need a bag this large is because this is the um, Bible I use. It's huge. It's it's very big. And it's, um, it's a large print Bible, so um, it's easier to read for me. It has a lot of pages, um, as all Bibles do, but because it's large print and easy to read and it lays flat, it is one of the larger Bibles you're going to see other than ones that have more um, things with it. But anyhow, so why do I take the Coach Pride tote to church? Um, I am, as you know, I was raised Buddhist by my mother. My father was raised Baptist, but he was not practicing by the time we came along. And my mother had always been Buddhist, still Buddhist, and still wonders why I'm Christian. Um, but there's a difference of point of view when you're raised in the East or Eastern philosophies or Buddhist that become Christian because uh, you'll often see Buddhist Christians, but you will not really see Christian Buddhists. What do I mean by that? Um, people who are raised in the West, and I'm specifically talking about America, um, have a very puritanical view on religious tolerance. And what I'm saying about that is um, where I live, which is Central Texas, and um, where I grew up, which is a little south of Central Texas, uh, religious point of view is very one-sided. And when you look at one point of view, it's hard to be tolerant for anything. And it's hard to understand other points of view if you've only learned one, and if everybody around you has only learned one. And even if in, in American Christian culture we have s many denominations, it's still around the same grouping of learnings. So when I grew up, I didn't know anything about the Bible. I didn't know anything about Jesus. I didn't learn about Jesus as a person until um, I think I was 10. I have, a, I have a story. But we will, that's a different video. And I only, I only do that one if people actually want to hear how I learned about Jesus because it's personal and, and not everybody cares. But if you do care, I will make one. Um, but so anyhow, um, why this is important is because how I look at the Bible is different um, than most people do who grew up with it being told uh, our lots of our cultural references are very much biblical or it is set in stone, and even those references are from the Bible. Um, and it's really hard to think in terms of flexibility if you've been taught something is concrete, this is how it is, don't contradict me, don't ask questions. Where um, in the East, there's a lot more fluidity um, in everything. And so I grew up with my um knowing that my cousin was gay or going to be gay and it gay wasn't even a word that we knew of we just knew that um effeminate you know or which is not even the right word either there is really no vocabulary in english for this but there is one in thai and um it was not a big deal we just knew that and moved on and and i grew up knowing that some people preferred their own gender and some people didn't and that was fine and then when we moved to America that's when I learned that it was wrong I'm like what you know it was very confusing because uh, we grew up in America but 
as I said, for a short time and we were children, children. And like we grew up in Hawaii, grew up in Virginia, and then we moved to Thailand. And then that's where we, between ages um, 7 and 11, we were in Thailand. So that's very formative years when you're learning how to reference things. And and anyway, um, long story, this would be a long story because my life is a drama, but um, I, I grew up with a lot more tolerance for other people's choices. And that's why I like the, uh, the Methodist church right now. We're going through something, but that's like all religions and I'm not going to abandon it. So I take the pride tote to represent my belief. My belief is that um, everybody deserves love and uh, love who you want as long as we're consenting adults. I don't care. And um, I carry it because sometimes people do ask, like, why are you carrying that tote? Because they know I'm married for 15 years and they know that, you know, James and I are a, a hetero couple and they're like, and James is decked out in pride gear and they're like, why are you wearing pride stuff? And we're like, because we like rainbows colors and we think people should just be able to love who they want. And if they ask, they get the answer. I am not one of those folk that are like, oh, well, I just like the colors. No, 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 no. I said, I, I really like the pride collection. I'll fly out, say it and tell people. Um, <laughs> it's, it's kind of fun to see people um, react to that because I am a little blunt and um, they're not expecting that. And, and they're being polite and whether they believe it or not um, or agree or not. And <laughs> they... Um, doesn't care. move on so anyway it brings up conversation it represents who I am and what I believe in I have not gone to churches that I thought I'd like to attend once I read their bylaws and said oh yeah no not going there I, I can't do that um I'm not going to sit here and judge other people um, I don't think that's their place I don't think that's in the bible um my whole I have a whole philosophy on the bible <laughs> my husband and I talk about this all the time we can go right back into history and talk about it and it's because I learned about um, all these things as an adult from a different culture and perspective that I have this ability to say hey what about this what about that because I grew up going to temples and going to um, all these religious um, other religious traditions in a different culture and then when I found this other new culture in America, I'm like, well, is this cool? I like this. I, I really do believe in the message, but um, I don't always believe in how it's executed. And I think um, the most interesting thing I've observed as a, a Christian in America right now is that um, most of the time, if you are raised Christian, you don't, when you find Eastern philosophies, you tend to say, I'm spiritual, but I'm not religious. And I think that is because how we teach religion here is so definitive and narrow that there is no room. And we're not saying what you're believing is wrong. We're, you can be Buddhist and you can be Christian and you can be religious and it's okay. But a lot of people are told, well, if you don't believe in this exactly how I'm telling you, then you're wrong and you can't be, you can't be in our club. And I'm like, well, no, you're wrong. That's not what this book is about. You do know this book wasn't written in English, right? That this book was in the Middle East and this book was written 2,000 years ago, but the rest of the world was around. <laughs> you know, it's like Thailand's 3,000 years old. You know, I've stood in front of buildings. Uh, we were visiting um, Vienna in Germany and I was like, this is an 800-year-old building. This building has been here since before the United States was the United States. Um, as a country, I mean, because we're a young country, but I'm like, there's places and things out there that you just haven't seen and then you haven't experienced because in America, we're, we are a young country. We are a conglomerate of people. We are uh, established a lot for religious beliefs and freedoms. Unfortunately, we become a little bit more intolerant as time has gone on. Um, <laughs> but at least we have the freedom to say that. And I can say that. And, and I know in the comments, people are going to sit there and, and, and tell me, I'm wrong. Um, that's okay. Go ahead. Tell me I'm wrong. As long as your comments are not outright hate speech, I'm cool with it. Um, you're not going to change my mind. But if it makes you feel better to talk to me about it, I will engage. So, um, but if it just devolves into he said, she said, we're not engaging. Um, have a, a lovely day. This video should be coming out on Palm Sunday. I will be at church. I will um, be at Sunday school and I'll be taking this lovely bag with me. Um, along with this lovely bag, by the way, I use these um, 
SLGs. These are cosmetic pouches. And everybody who has ever had a, a purse come back with pen marks because you bought something pre-loved or something, uh, buy these. These are cosmetic, small cosmetic couches, a pouch by Dooney. And why do I use a cosmetic pouch instead of a pencil case? Um, well, I use pens. I don't use pencils. And these fit perfectly. And, and, and this one over here, which is a softer material, it's a fabric versus, well, these are both fabric. This is a, a nylon and this is more of a cotton blend. But this holds um, all my highlighters. Um, so this is a little bit more compact. It's the right length. It squishes more, even with my Disney pin, because I love Disney. Um, and it holds more volume, absolute more volume than a pencil case. I do have pencil cases. They still hold pens because I don't use pencils. But um, I recommend these. And I might do a whole video just on, on these. But anyway, y'all have a great Sunday. Happy Holy Week. And I'll talk to you next week. Um, have a great day. Bye.